welcome, 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 welcome to St. Paul, folks. Hey, glad to have you here for another weekly virtual worship experience. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Man, we pray that you get something to take with you for the rest of the week and that you're inspired and blessed by the word from this sermon. Also, we like to say uh, we hope that all of you fathers had a wonderful Father's Day weekend last weekend. I know I did. I yes. know I ain't, you know, shot the shot, but I do have a lot of kids that I'm responsible for, <laughs> and I appreciate you all. Yes, absolutely. But before we get started, let's go on and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for everything that we have seen and we've experienced and through your covering. Yes, Father, we also thank you for this opportunity that we have to come to you once again in worship and spirit and truth. We also thank you, Father, for the fellowship that you have blessed us with. Heavenly Father, thank you for the things you protected us from that we see and we don't see. And thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon us that we've received and those yet to come. And then, Father, as we continue through this worship experience, we pray that everything we do here is pleasing and acceptable unto thy sight. In your son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Let's go. So glad you made it. Welcome to this place.
the St. Paul United Methodist Church wants to take a moment and celebrate our graduates, the class of 2022. Congratulations. Now, let's take a moment and celebrate our high school graduates. Starting with Jaden Deskins. Jaden graduated from Bishop McNamara High School and in the fall will be attending Virginia Wesleyan College in Virginia Beach. Congratulations, Jaden. Ethan Chaplin Lee graduated from Laurel High School. In the fall, Ethan will be attending the University of Maryland College Park, majoring in computer science. Patrick Malloy graduated from Friendly High School. In the fall, Patrick will be attending Monroe College, majoring in culinary hospitality management. Congratulations. Alana Reed graduated from Westlake High School. In the fall, Alana will be attending Morgan State University, majoring in nursing. Louis Toob graduated from Friendly High School. In the fall, Louis will attend Prince George's Community College. Congratulations to all of our high school graduates. We wish you much success. And now let's take a moment to celebrate our graduates graduating from an undergraduate program and a master's degree program. Starting with Kamaya Johnson, graduating with a Bachelor's of Fine Art in Architecture from Savannah College of Fine Arts. Michael Lamar Lowry, graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Electrical Engineering from Morgan State University. Zakia Hutchinson, graduated with a Master's of Education in School Counseling from Bowie State University. On behalf of the St. Paul United Methodist Church, again, we want to celebrate and congratulate our graduating class of 2022. We wish you much love and success on all of your future endeavors. Congratulations. back we're back to in-person worship so but you need to register online uh we want you back here and as always we're also online at 8 10 30 and 12 noon hey but hold up if you're coming in the building make sure you mask up man right. none of them none of that none, none of that, that. Uh, hey also have you downloaded the church app I mean, you can watch the worship on Sundays, see all the sermons follow events give and much more just go to st paul oxenhill.org under updates and download the app that's right that's right that's right this week's devotional is seven impactful reminders go to our website under the ministries tab and click current devotionals to sign up mm -hmm. hey and also join us for the uh, morning prayer call monday through friday at 7 30 a.m simply dial in at 605-313-5874 and the access code is 390-060. Now, for food, our food pantry. Thursdays, you must call for appointment. Call the church for an appointment, but on Fridays, it's first come, first serve, starting at 3 p.m. Yep, yep. And listen, you know I'm a proponent for volunteering for yes, any ministry at this yes, church. Is. Go to www.stpauloxenhill.org under contact us and click I want to serve. But listen, this is why it's important. The church is a hub of our community. We not only come here to get closer to God, we come here to learn from each other and gain skills and experiences that will help us out in the world. So we want to be a part, I know I do, I know DJ does, and I know there's several others in our St. Paul community that have these skills that we need to pass on to our young folks and other individuals who would love to learn. Listen, come get something that will help you throughout your life, not just in the church, but we definitely appreciate your your contributions, your, your contribution. help, your yes. helping to build the community. Right. So come on out. We really appreciate it. 
Yeah, because through God comes to everything. So if you're looking for that big bag, man, come to the church. Get God and get the bag. <laughs> <laughs> and have a blessed day. All right, Pastor, All what right, you got yeah. for us? Come on, go. Amen. Listen, I want to thank Reggie and DJ for hosting this week. They did such a phenomenal job. Listen, drop some praise hands in the comments and thank them for the wonderful job that they did. Listen, over the last few weeks, like I told you, I appreciate all of your faithful financial support to the church. Your faithful financial support has allowed us to be a blessing to the community. It's allowed us to be able to reach out, to feed people, to do all manner of things. And I thank you for that. And I want to ask you to continue your faithful financial support. But I also want to challenge you to give also of your time and your talent. As we're doing more things here at the church, we need more volunteers. We need more people to not only invest their funds in the kingdom, but invest their lives in the kingdom. So I want you to take some time this week and really think, is there an hour I can donate to the church every week? Are there two hours I can donate to the church? Listen, God has gifted you and there's always a way for you to give back to God. So do me a favor, do this. Go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org and under contact us, there's a link that says, I want to serve. Do me a favor, click that. Let us know how you want to serve and let us know what you'd like to do because we want to get you into your time, your talent, and your treasure invested in the kingdom for kingdom building and kingdom growth. Listen, let's prepare right now to give our morning offerings through our tithes, our regular offerings, and any special gifts that you want to give. We are halfway through the year, and I thank you all for your faithful financial support. But if you want to give a little extra right now, right now is a great time to bless God for the blessing that he's been to you. Remember what the Bible says. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God indeed loves a cheerful giver. Now, let's prepare to give our tithes and offerings unto the Lord. There are multiple ways that you can give to the St. Paul Church. You can give by clicking on the link on the screen in front of you. You can also give by going to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org, and pressing the Give tab. If you want to give by using your cell phone, you can give through the Givelify app. Just search for St. Paul Church in Oxen Hill and you'll find a picture of me and a picture of the church so you know you're giving to the right place and you can give safely and securely there. Last but not least, you can always mail your tithes and offerings to the St. Paul Church. You can mail them to 6634 St. Barnabas Road, Oxen Hill, Maryland, 20745, Attention Finance Ministry. As you give, remember what the word tells us. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, let's give abundantly unto the Lord.
to be preaching the word of God today. Listen, I've got a word for you this week from the gospel according to St. Mark. And I'll be reading for your hearing from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Listen to what the word of God says this week. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his coat aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Let's pray real quick. Father in heaven, we have a word from you today. Lord God, because you've given us your gospel, you've given us the ability to receive it, to hear it, and to apply it to our lives. So God, right now, I ask you to give me the information and the revelation to give to your people for their edification. God, right now, I ask you to give me good seed for good soil, to plant it down deep so it'll grow roots, to water, nurture, and fertilize so it'll grow up and bear fruit to all the land. Dear God, stand up in me as I stand up for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, this morning, I want to tag this text very simply. This is my last day. This is my last 
today. Do y'all realize that we are almost six months into 2022? This is the last Sunday in the first half of the year of our Lord, 2022. And I realized this week as I was preparing this word, and as I was thinking and praying, that there are often times that we get off to a great start and then we peter out along the way and then we try to reboot and get ourselves back together at the end of the year. And the Lord laid it on my heart to simply tell you this, you don't have to wait till the end of the year to get your stuff together. I want to tell you there are some things, not that I'm not carrying into 2023, there are some things that I am not carrying into the second half of 2022. There are some things that I am leaving back in June. There are some things that I am leaving in the first half of 2022 because they're not serving me, they're not building me, and they're not propelling me. And I want you to know there are some things that you need to leave in the first half of 2022. As you move Move into the second half of this year. There are some things that you're going to have to leave behind, some things you're going to have to pick up, and some things you're going to have to do different. And what I want you to know is you're not going to wait this year to Jen to December 31st to let some stuff go. This year, you're going to say, Today is my last day. Simply put, sometimes you just got to make a decision that enough is enough. Sometimes you just got to make a decision that this is the end of the road. Sometimes you just got to make a decision that it ends here. All of us know what it's like to quit a job. You know when you've gotten to that point with that job that you're just like, you know what? Y'all don't pay me enough to deal with this. I don't make enough to deal with this. The benefits ain't enough to deal with this. I'm done. And that's the day that you made up your mind. We're going to get on monster.com. We're going to get on LinkedIn. We're going to do everything that we need to do to move on from here. All of us know what it's like when you get to that point in a relationship where you're like, look, we just need to break up. It's like you cute. All of that is all well and good. I like your company half the time, but that other half of the time you are driving me nuts. And this is where you and I depart. I want all of you to understand right now as we close out the first half of 2022, all of us have a time when we are like Papa and we say, I've had all that I can stand and I can't stand no more. But here's the question. What will you do? when you've had all that you can stand and you can't stand no more. Simply put, you have to make the decision to do something about it. You have to make the decision to do something different. As we enter into the second half of 2022, I want you to make the decision that around some things, this is your last day. I want somebody to understand that you gotta, that you gotta believe this is your last day. This is your last day afraid. This is your last day struggling. This is your last day living beneath the call of God. This is your last day going back and forth with some folk. This is your last day putting up with some stuff. This is your last day. I need you to write it down in the comments for yourself. This is my last day. When you have declared that this is your last day, you realize that you have now made a decision to cross a line that will take you somewhere where you have never been before. When you declare this is my last day, you've got to make some new decisions, try some new things, and move in some new ways so that you can see all that God is trying to do. And I want you to understand, there are some things that God will not do until you declare that other things are over. There are some doors God will not open until you allow some other doors to close. There are some opportunities that God will not present until you let go of some things in the past that were holding you back and keeping you away. What you've got to understand is that at a certain point, you've got to make the decision to shoot your shot, do your thing, and declare from now on it's going to be different. As we enter into this text in the Gospel according to Mark, I want you to see what happens when you make the decision that something is going to be different. We find a man named Bartimaeus, and the Bible tells us that he's been blind since birth. Interestingly enough, the name Bartimaeus isn't even really a name. Bartimaeus simply means he was the son of a man named Timaeus. Now, the reason I would say that this isn't necessarily his name is because we know that Peter, formerly known as Simon Bar-Jonah, Simon the son of Jonah, they didn't just walk around 
around calling him Bar Jonah. He had a name, Bar Jonah. When we talk about Bartimaeus, many times we've called him blind Bartimaeus. Because I want you to understand, when you've stayed in the wrong thing too long, you will begin to be known by your affliction, not by your personality. You will be beginning to be known by what you're going through, not, God, not who God has created you to be. Many of us have lost our name because of the things that we've been involved in. Many of us have lost our name because of the situations that we found ourselves in. Many of us have had times when we were identified by our affliction, not by our destiny. And I want you to understand right now that this can be the last day that you're identified by what you're going through. This should be the last day that you're identified by your past. Today is the day to step into your destiny and step into what God has for you, but you've got to be ready to declare this is my last day. When you're ready to declare that this is your last day, you are ready to reclaim who God made you to be. But here's the thing. Once you decide this is it, you got to move into something else. The Bible tells us as we enter into the text, one day Jesus is coming through Jericho and he's on his way to Jerusalem. As Jesus and the disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I want you to see something. It is not by mistake that Bartimaeus is where he is in that moment. Let me show you what I mean. The Bible tells us that as they came to Jericho, Jesus, Jesus with, his, with his disciples and a large crowd were leaving the city. Understand this. They came in one side of the city. They came out the other side of the city. Now, Jericho was a large enough city that they didn't necessarily come in and out on the same day. Remember, they're walking, so they can only go so far so fast, and they can only go for so long. Long. And we know that Jesus at this point in his ministry is on his way to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is at least a day's walk uphill from Jericho, which means that they wouldn't have tried to walk Jericho to Jerusalem in the same day. So Jesus has been in town for a minute. Jesus has been around for a minute. And Bartimaeus has found out that Jesus of Nazareth was there. Now notice, because Jesus is traveling with a crowd, he's not difficult to identify. He's not difficult to find. And the Bible tells us that blind Bartimaeus is sitting on the roadside that Jesus is walking down. I want you to understand that when it's your last day, you got to reposition yourself. Write it down in the comments. Reposition yourself. You got to move from where you were to where the blessing might be. As Jesus is walking down the road in Jericho on his way to Jerusalem, Bartimaeus sets himself up so that he can encounter the Lord. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you set yourself up to encounter Jesus? When is the last time you put yourself in a place where you knew that Jesus would be? When was the last time you put yourself in a place where that you knew there would be praise? You knew that there would be worship. You knew that there would be an opportunity for you to engage with the Lord, for you to hear from the Lord, for you to be with the Lord. Sometimes, watch this, to move into your destiny, you've got to move your body. Let me help somebody. When you move your body, Move to where Jesus is moving. Move to where the spirit is moving. Move to where the things of God are going on. Because when you know that the things of God are going on, watch this. You may run into the Lord and you may get some overflow. Let me tell somebody. There's nothing like being around the Lord. Because when you're around the Lord, you never know what's going to happen. When you're around the Lord, you never know how the Spirit is going to move. When you're around the Lord, you never know what blessing is just going to drop off. Bartimaeus sets himself up on the roadside so he can be in the way of the Lord, so he can call out to the Lord. Now watch this. He doesn't just sit there. When he knows it's Jesus, he begins to shout. Understand? Sometimes... You can't be quiet no more. I want to help somebody. 
You've been sitting on your praise. You've been sitting on your worship. Some of you have been sitting on your pain. There comes a time when you've been sitting long enough and you need to open your mouth and shout until God hears you. You need to open your mouth and be dramatic. Open your mouth and be demonstrative. Open your mouth and be loud. Open your mouth and be boisterous because the Lord needs to hear from you. I need about 10 of y'all who are watching right now online to just realize that when you open your mouth, God will hear you. When you open your mouth, God will respond to you. And like my mama used to tell me, a closed mouth don't get fed. Bartimaeus made the decision to shout because the Lord was nearby. When you're near God, whether you're sitting in your house, when you're near God, whether you're sitting here in the sanctuary, when you're near God, you have the right to shout to get his attention. You have the right to call on his name so that he can hear you. Bartimaeus starts yelling, have mercy on me. He starts yelling because he's trying to get the Lord's attention. He gets in his way. He moves and he shouts. But watch this. When he starts shouting and gets the Lord's attention, he not only gets the Lord's attention, he gets some other folks' attention. Can we be honest? What's stopping some of us from calling on God and moving into our last day to our next day is that we're embarrassed of what folk are going to say. Bible tells us that as he shouted, there are people there who literally tell him, keep it down. Right here, the Bible says, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Here's the problem. When folk are rebuking you and telling you to be quiet, the issue is they don't always understand what you're going through. Let me explain something to you. There are some times in life when I can be prim and proper. There are some times in life when I will throw on the best of the best and walk with my head up among the aristocrats and the aristocracy of the world. But there are some times in life when it's just time to get down and get dirty. There are some times in life when decorum is not the call of the day. There are some times in life when with what you're going through, you don't have time to be cute about it. You don't have time to be pretty about it. You don't have time to put up one finger and wait to be called on. Some Sometimes when what you're going through has gotten to be enough, Bartimaeus said, I'm going to shout now because I've been through too much. For anybody that's watching me, that you feel like you're going through too much, you can declare this is my last day by shouting unto the Lord right now. You can declare that this will be your last moment like this by shouting unto the Lord right now. You have to make the decision that what other folk think doesn't matter as much as my deliverance. When you decide it's your last day, nothing else matters. The point, the people don't matter. The looks don't matter. The ridicule doesn't matter. Embarrassment doesn't matter. What folk will think doesn't matter. Decorum doesn't matter. When you decide it's your last day and it's time to shout unto the Lord for him to pull you out of what you're going through, you've got to get past that. Past your embarrassment. Past your feelings. Past the judgment of others. Write it down in the comments. I'm past that. Oh, when you get past that, let me explain it to you. You get a level of freedom that doesn't always come to folk. You get a level of freedom that allows you to worship truly. You get a level of freedom that allows you to move truly. You get a level of freedom that allows you to connect with the Lord truly. There comes a time in everyone's life when you got to get yourself free from the opinions of others. Free from the decorum of others. Free from believing that you should be embarrassed. You've got to get free and get past that. Because when you get past that, you'll get the Lord's attention. When you get past that, you'll get on God's radar. You can't let people who are not in your situation decide how you should respond to your pain. Too many times, folk want to tell you, well, I wouldn't do that. Well, I wouldn't respond that way. Well, I don't think that's how it should be done. Good for you. Don't be so invested in what other folk think that you don't get what you need from the Lord. We live in an I wouldn't do that world. 
Where everybody's trying to stay on brand. Everybody's trying to be cute. Everybody's trying to make sure that nobody judges them. Judge me when I shout. Judge me when I'm in pain. Judge me when I'm crying out to the Lord. Because I'm not crying out to you. I'm crying up to him. You've got to get past what folk think. Because you don't need permission to be delivered. You just need Jesus to be delivered. They rebuked him and he cried all the louder, have mercy on me. I want you to understand, he was doing something right there that many of us have got to get to the point of doing. He was shooting his shot. That's right, I said it, he was shooting his shot. For any of you that watch the playoffs, y'all realize my man Steph Curry, he was shooting his shot the whole time. He was just letting them fly from wherever. And blind Bartimaeus was shooting his shot. He looked at it and said, I may not get this close to the Lord again. I may not be able to be in his presence again. So while he's here, I'm going to shoot my shot. And look what the Bible says. Jesus stopped. Hear me. <clears throat> Bartimaeus raised so much of a ruckus <clears throat> that Jesus stopped. This is what I want somebody to understand. The Lord is so invested in you that he will stop when you call. The Lord is so invested in you. The, God loves you so much that he will stop when you call. Remember, Jesus was on his way somewhere. He was on his way to Jerusalem. He was on his way to his destiny. He's moving through Jericho, not staying in Jericho. And he's got this multitude of folk that are going with him. And when he hears the man call him and shouting unto him, Jesus says, wait, call him. This is what I want you to understand. God loves you so much that he'll stop what he's doing to hear your concern. God loves you so much that he will stop where he's going to hear your concerns. You've got to understand, your concerns are not trivial to God. Your situation is not trivial to God. What you're going through is not trivial to God. Jesus is walking and hears this man. And when he hears him, he stops and tells him, come here. But now here's the funny thing. This is why you can't look at people. The same folk who told him to be quiet are the same folk who came in and said, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Let me explain something to you. The very same folk who will be hating on you one day will be cheering for you another day. And the same folk who are cheering for you one day will be hating on you another day. Your job is not to get invested in what they think because people are fickle. The same folk who bring you up will try to tear you down. And the same folk who tore you down will try to get with you when you come up. you got to let their opinions go because they will flip and flop and go back and forth. And here it is. You can't be bound by them when you're trying to get out. I want you to write it down. This is my last day with folk. I don't mean that you got to be a hermit. I don't mean that you got to walk away. I don't mean go live under a bridge somewhere and be a troll. What I'm saying is this has to be the last day that you are worried about what they think. Who are they? They are the people who are not praying with you. They are the people who are not praying for you. They are the people that are telling you you're too boisterous. They are the people that are telling you you shout too much. They are the people that are telling you you shouldn't do all that worshiping. They are the people that are telling you what are you getting out of reading your Bible. They are the people that are trying to move you away from the Lord. Stop listening to them. Because what they say doesn't matter. What matters is the man who said, call him here. And look what the Bible says. When he calls him, he throws off his cloak, jumps to his feet, and comes to Jesus. Why, in the midst of this crowd, does Jesus call him over? 
Very simply, Psalm number 116 tells us in verse 1 and 2, I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. I want you to understand, when you call on the Lord, he hears you and he inclines his ear to you no matter what's going on around you. And when Jesus calls him, he made the decision, I'm not worried about this. He threw off his cloak, jumped up and runs to the Lord. And here's what Jesus did. What do you want me to do for you? It seems like a reasonable question, except it also seems like there should be an obvious answer. This man is known by his issue, known by his problem. Even today, we call this the story of blind Bartimaeus. But Jesus asked him, what is it that you want? What I want you to understand is that when you call on the Lord, you got to know what you want. And here's the problem that many of us have. We under ask. Pastor, what do you mean we under ask? Oh, he could have, when he called on him, said, hey, man, you, you, you got a couple denarii? Because the Bible says that he sat by the road begging. He, he could have said, hey, can you get some of these people to leave me alone? He could have said, hey, can, can you get me a house? He could have went for a whole bunch of things. And here's the thing. I want you to understand that the Lord wants to know what you want because you will get blessed at the level that you ask. And then you will receive it at the level of your faith. And too many of us, can we be honest? We don't have the faith to ask for what we need. We don't have the faith to believe that God can come through in immeasurable ways. We don't have the faith to believe that no matter how big we ask, our God is able to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Jesus wants to know how big his ask is because how big your ask is is a demonstration of how big your faith is. There have been times in my life when I didn't want to ask God for stuff because I didn't want to be disappointed. And I'm here to tell you that was not a God issue. That was a me issue. It wasn't that God couldn't handle my ask. It wasn't that God couldn't come through. I was afraid that I was asking God for too much. So I decided to settle for less when God was offering more. I want somebody who's watching me today to understand this is your last day of asking for less than is available. This is your last day for selling God short. This is your last day for not believing God can come through. This is your last day for not believing that God has a cattle on a thousand hills. This is your last day for not believing that God can make a way out of no way. And if there's still no way, he can still make another way. This is your last day. This is your last day of going through like God can't bring you out. This is your last day of being broken down when God is trying to break you through. This is your last day of whirling on the humble when God is trying to lift you up. This is your last day of acting like God is not able. If you're going to be a believer, you've got to believe that if nothing else, God is able. Jesus asked him, what do you want? You got my attention. I've stopped the crowd. I've stopped my trip. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus stops and asks him the question. And this was his response. Lord, I want to see. Seems like a simple request. What do you want me to do for you? Rabbi, I want to see. Now, for us, it seems obvious, but can I help you? He's asking him for something he may never have had before. For all we know, he may have been born blind. And let me show you why this is important. He's asking for an experience that is beyond his experience. He's asking for a blessing that he does not know anything about. 
if he's never seen before, he's not asking for God to get him through at the level he's on. He's asking for God to give him wholeness to take him to the level that God has for him. I want somebody to understand. Stop asking for God, God for stuff based on your experience and start asking for stuff based on God's word. Stop asking for stuff based on what you know and start living according to what God says is possible. When you start living according to what God says is possible, God can move you into your destiny. God can move you to the next level. God can move you to the next plane. God can move you forward as soon as you get the faith to ask him for things that are beyond what you've already had. He's never seen before. But he asked for sight. Because he knows that if I can see, the rest is easy. Too many of us, we've asked God for things that we could get for ourselves if we knew how to ask God for the right thing. Stop asking God for houses and cars. Stop asking God for Gucci and Louis. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for insight. Because if you get wisdom and insight, you can get all the cars, houses, Gucci and Louis that you've ever wanted. If you ask God for wisdom and insight, if you ask God to let you see the kingdom of God, the Bible tells us that if we seek first the kingdom, all these other things will be added unto us. You've got to ask for kingdom things, not earthly things. Too many times we are so stuck on the ground that we forget that there's a God who wants us to fly. You've got to get to the point where you start asking God for godly things, knowing that when you get those, the rest will take care of itself. He said, I want to see. If I can see, I can get a job. If I can see, I don't have to beg anymore. If I can see, I don't have to depend on these folk anymore. If I can see, I don't have to deal with this anymore. If I can see, everything changes. I want to ask God for things that will change stuff so that this is my last day. My last day going through, my last day begging, my last day broken down. I want God to bless me in kingdom ways so that this is the last day I'm going through that. And look what the Bible says. He asked them. I want to see. And Jesus says, go. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Look what, look what the Lord tells him. Go. Your faith has healed you. Notice, Jesus doesn't lay hands on him. Jesus doesn't speak a word over him other than go. In other words, because you had faith, I can give you what you asked for. Many times we get mad at God because we ask for stuff that we don't have the faith to believe that God is going to do it. We don't have the faith to believe that God is going to come through. And then we get mad at God. It's not God. It's the level of your faith that makes the difference. God can do anything. But will you ask at the level of faith that is required for what you want? If this is going to be your last day, I need you to understand you got to shoot your shot with faith. One of the things I love about Steph Curry is that no matter where he's shooting from, no matter how crazy the shot looks, Steph believes it's going in. How do you know? Because about half the time, Steph will shoot and turn his back before the ball goes in. Because his belief is that I've done my part and that the ball will do its part. I want you to understand, when you start moving in the things of God, when you start acting in faith, when you start chasing kingdom principles, when you start following God and following his will and aligning your will with God's will, when you shoot your shot in faith, you ain't even got to look at the ball no more because you've done your part now you know God will do his part. You've done your part and you know God will come through. You've done your part and you don't even have to doubt, you know it's going in. My brothers and my sisters, 
Today is your last day. Today is my last day. Last day that I'm going to be broken down. Last day that I'm going to operate faithlessly. Last day that I'm going to deal with less than God would have for me. I want you to be positioned. I want you to make your petition. I want you to shout unto God because I want this to be your last day being blind. I want this to be your last day going through. He had his last day blind, his last day without vision, his last day as a dependent. I want you to be able to just shout out to God knowing that Psalm 37 and 4 says, take the light in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. When you start operating in faith, God will give you the desires of your heart because your heart will align with his heart and God will give you every good and perfect gift. So so this is your last day. This is your last day being broke, busted, and disgusted. This is your last day being broken and going through. This is your last day wondering when God is going to show. God is here. Shout now. God is moving. Shout now. Move yourself. Shout yourself. And make your position, petition known to God, knowing that he hears to you. Because God is responding to those who cry out in faith. God is responding to those who call his name. God is responding to those who have the faith to move when it doesn't look like it should happen. He moved and his faith made him well. I want you to know your faith is going to make you well. Your faith is going to make you free. Your faith is going to make you whole. Your faith is going to bring you through. This is your last day sitting on the side of the road. This is your last day going through. This is your last day wondering what's going to happen. From this point on, you're going to move in faith. You're going to speak in faith. You're going to act in faith. And God will respond to your faith. Because this is your last day. Whew. Listen, I just got finished preaching that word. This is your last day. And I am tired. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm sweating up under here like nobody's business. But when the Lord gives you a word that can change lives, you put your all into it and you put everything that you have into it. So listen, if that word connected with you, if something inside of you said, this is my last day, I want you to know you're saying that because you connected with God. You didn't connect with what I was saying. You connected with what you were hearing from on high. Today may be the day for you to get saved. Today may be the day for you to become a church member. Today may be the day that you need special prayer. Whatever it is, here at the St. Paul family, we are here for you. Go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org, and under contact us, there'll be an option there for you. If you need salvation, if you want church membership, if you want prayer, reach out to us. We'll reach right back out to you because today should be the last day that you go without God, that you go without a church home, and that you go without prayer. This changes everything, and today is your last day. So you shout out to God and reach out to us, and we'll shout out to God and reach right back out to you. Listen, I want to thank you for supporting our program. Listen, make sure that if you're watching us on YouTube that you like and subscribe and ring that bell so you get notifications. We want to make sure that you're getting all the content that we put out whenever we put it out because we know that it'll be a blessing to your life. Also, like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to have you knowing about everything that goes on here at the St. Paul Church. You're a blessing to us for giving us some of your time and we want to be a blessing to you. If you want to support our ministry, we thank you so much. Listen, every dollar counts. Whether you give a big gift or a small gift, it counts. It goes into kingdom soil for kingdom work. And when we plant it, it grows up and it is multiplied unto us, unto the world, and honestly, right back unto you. So if you want to give a gift, if you want to give your tithe and your regular offering, or if you want to make a special gift unto the church, go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org, and press the Give button, and you'll be able to give right there. Also, if you want to mail a check to us, you can mail a check to the church at 6634 St. Barnabas Road, Oxon Hill, Maryland, 20745, and just mark it Attention Finance, and we will take your gift and your offering that way. We thank you so much. We're glad you joined us. Remember, this is your last day like that, because tomorrow, today, as soon as you connect with God in faith, everything will be different. 
Hang in there for me for another minute. Here's the Williams Weekly Challenge. The Word of God tells us not only to be hearers of the Word, but also doers of the Word. Listen, over the last couple weeks, y'all know what time it was. It was the NBA Finals. And I am so proud of the dubs, not because I'm a fan, but because I always cheer for the old guys. Listen, this is the thing that I realized about Steph Curry. That man will shoot his shot, and he always believes it's going to go in. How do you know? Because he releases and turns around and walks away. Listen, what I want you to understand is you will miss 100% of the shots that you do not take. So this week, my challenge to you is to stop waiting, stop procrastinating, and shoot your shot. There are opportunities that God is opening up for you, but you got to shoot your shot by faith and believe that it's going to go in. If you shoot your shot, God will bless you along the way. God bless you. I love you. And we'll see you next time.